Welcome to question 8 of the 2019 Mathematical Methods Exam 1 for the Southern Hemisphere. In this video we will be looking at the solution and examination advice for this question. A reminder that this video is in no way endorsed by VCAR. We are told that the function f with a domain of all real numbers is a polynomial function of degree 4. Part of the graph of f is shown below and we know that the graph of f touches the x-axis at the origin. So that's a turning point at that point on the graph. For part a, we're asked to find the rule of f. So f of x, we know has x-intercepts at negative 1, 0 and 1. So we can use a factorised form of a quartic or degree 4 polynomial to help find the equation of this graph. So f of x is going to equal some dilation factor, which we can't forget about, multiplied by x squared and that will guarantee that we go through the point zero zero and that it just touches and turns away again at that point and then because we know that it goes through this point here at negative one zero we're going to have an x plus one as part of the rule or as a factor of this polynomial and the last point here that is an x intercept is at one zero so that means we'll have x subtract one as another factor as a part of this rule so not that you need to do this, but it will make things slightly easier in our working in a moment. But we can rewrite this as ax squared. And then instead of having x plus 1 times x minus 1, that's the same as x squared minus 1 using the difference of two squares expansion and factorization pattern. Next, we need to work out what this dilation factor a is. And to do that, we're going to use one of these additional coordinates that are included on the graph, which turn out to be the stationary points. So we're going to substitute that point into the rule. So f of x, we're going to substitute in 1 over root 2. So when we put that into the rule, I'm going to use that slightly simplified rule that I wrote last. So it's going to be a times 1 on root 2 squared times, and then it's 1 on root 2 squared subtract one and now we know that this is going to equal the y value of that coordinate which is one so therefore we still have an a here and one on root two squared is actually just a half so we have a times one half times and then this is a half subtract one so that will turn into negative a half and that's still going to equal 1. So therefore, we actually find that negative a divided by 4 is equal to 1. So therefore, multiplying by negative 4, we get a equals minus 4. However, the question asks for the rule of f. So that means that we need to work out the rule, which is as simple as substituting the a value we just found into the rule we already had. So that means that f of x is going to equal a, which is minus 4 times x squared times x squared subtract 1. So that is our final answer for part A of this question. The examiners remarked that this question was well attempted by students but not well done, with only 14% of students getting full marks for that question. Many students overlooked the dilation factor which we found to be negative 4 on the previous slide. Next, the question introduces g which is the function with the same rule as f and we're also going to let h be the function with some domain d, where h of x has a rule log e of g of x minus log e of x cubed plus x squared. And for part b, we're asked to state d, which is the maximal domain of h. So for this question, the domain d, which is the maximal domain of h, is going to equal the domain of this first part of the rule, because we're adding two smaller rules together to create the function h. So it's going to be the domain, which I'm just going to write as dom, of the rule log e of g of x, which had the same rule as f of x, which was minus 4x squared bracket x squared minus 1, if I remember correctly. And that there is going to be the domain of that intersecting the domain of this second rule that's actually subtracted off. So it's the addition of two rules, or in this case, the subtraction. The overall domain is the intersection of the two. So we're going to look at the intersection between the first domain and the domain that is of the rule log e of, and it's going to be x cubed plus x squared. 
So that's fairly full on to look at. So what I'm going to do next is just have a think about what log e of x cubed plus x squared would have for its domain. So the domain that I've got written here in purple. So on this set of axes, I just want to sketch the rule, which is y equals x cubed plus x squared, which is the bit that's inside that log. I'm going to rewrite that as being y equals x squared bracket x plus 1 in factorized form because this will tell me that there's an x-intercept at minus 1 and there's a turning point at 0, 0. And it's a positive cubic, so we know that it's going to have this shape here. So that is the graph of x cubed plus x squared, which is the inner function of log e of x cubed plus x squared. And we know that a log e function will only exist when the function inside has values that are positive and non-zero. So because we know this is negative one, zero, and this is zero, zero, the only parts of this graph, so this is really a composite function question at the moment, the only parts of this graph where the y values can then go inside a log go from just after negative one to almost zero, and then from zero onwards again. So they are the y values of that inner function that can then go inside the log function. If we apply the same logic to the log e of minus 4x squared bracket x squared minus 1 component of this rule, this will only exist where that inner function, which is g of x, which has the same rule as f of x, which is the graph that I've included up above, that's only going to exist when we get y values out that are greater than 0. So that's going to go from almost negative 1 until 0. And we're going to have to exclude that 0. And then it'll start up again from 0 to positive 1. So those y values are positive, which means that they can go inside a log. So if we write down what we've just discussed so that we've got it there to look at, the domain D is going to equal and the domain of log e of negative 4x squared bracket x squared minus 1 is going to be from negative 1 excluded to 0 not included, union with 0 not included to positive 1. And we then need to look for the intersection of that with the other domain that we were considering. And we discussed that its domain is going to be from negative 1 not included to 0, union with 0, technically to infinity. Luckily for us, the intersection of those two intervals is just the first interval that we've got written there in green. So therefore, the domain D is going to be X is an element of, and it's going to be negative one to zero, union with zero to one. So that is the answer to part B of this question. From the examiner's report, we can see that less than 10% of students got the mark for this question. And the examiner goes on to say, students who did this question well realized that the maximal domain could be obtained by considering the common domains for f of x is greater than zero with the x cubed plus x squared graph being greater than zero. So that's what we were doing on the previous slide. For part C, we now want to state the range of the function h. And an important thing that we need to know or remember is that the maximal domain D was just found to be X is an element of negative one not included to zero not included union with zero to one. So what will be handy to have for this question is the actual rule for H of X. So H of X is going to equal log E, but instead of having log E of G of X subtract log E of X cubed plus x squared, we can use a log law that says when we subtract two logs with the same base, we can just divide the first by the second or the function inside in the first by the function inside of the second. So g of x was minus four x squared. And then I'm going to write this as x plus one x take one, just so that we have some common factors that we'll be able to cancel in a moment. And then we divide that by the x cubed plus x squared, which I'm going to rewrite as x squared bracket x plus 1. And now we can see that the x plus 1 here and the x plus 1 here would cancel, as well as this x squared and this x squared on the top line, because they're both common factors. So the rule simplifies to being equal to log e of minus 4 bracket x subtract 1. 
The next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually sketch log e of minus 4 x subtract 1 over the domain d. So just having a set of axes here where we can put that, we could look at the rule and see that there is going to be an asymptote at x equals positive 1. So if we just do a dotted line, preferably ruled down here at x equals 1, we then know that the log graph due to this negative 4 is reflected over the y-axis. So the log graph is going to appear on the left hand side of this asymptote but it's only going to exist from negative one to zero and then from zero to one. So this graph is going to look something like this and then it's going to approach that asymptote down here and I've deliberately left a gap there so I can put an open dot there because that point's going to be excluded because zero was excluded in the domain we found in part B and we also have an open dot here because that point was also excluded at negative one. And now our job is to find what the y value is at negative one and what the y value is at zero so that we can exclude those values as well. So to work out these y values, I'm going to use limit notation. That's quite a formal way of doing it, but I'm gonna say the limit as x approaches negative one of the rule log e of minus four bracket x minus one. We can just evaluate that directly just to find that y value by subbing negative one in so we'd get that that's log e of minus four times, and, that, and this will be minus one, subtract one is minus two. So that's going to equal log e of positive eight. So this coordinate here would be minus one comma log e of eight. Next, we're going to consider the limit as x approaches zero of our same rule log e of minus four bracket x minus one, and that's going to equal log e. We're just going to substitute in wherever there was an x, a zero, so we're just gonna have minus four times x minus one, will just be zero minus one is negative one. And then evaluating that, we just have log e of positive four. So this coordinate here would be zero comma log e of four. So the last thing to state is simply the range of the function h. So that's going to be, and we can see from our graph that this graph would be going towards negative infinity as x approaches one. So we're gonna go from negative infinity to the y value log e of four. And that's an open dot and a rounded bracket on our domain. So that's gonna be a rounded bracket on the range. And then we union that from the same value log e of four up until log e of eight. And that will have a rounded bracket on it because that value is not included. So this would be the answer to part C of this question. From the examiner's report, we can see that only 1% of students got this answer fully correct and that not many students attempted this question. Very few students use the logarithm laws, which were required to help simplify the h of x rule. And some students sketched various graphs with limited success. So on the previous page, I showed you a graph that would have led to an answer, but it would appear that many students on this exam didn't know how to tackle this kind of problem, which based on the numbers, it shows that it was a particularly challenging problem, again with only 1% of students getting full marks for the question.